All right, you beautiful humans, we are just gonna dive right into this one and follow up on a video that I did about that 60 Hertz refresh rate when you connect it to your 4K monitor and hooked up to your M1 Mac. And of course, the question being, can you get that higher refresh rate when it comes to a gaming monitor? Well, it really depends. So let's actually unpack this one. All right, friends, so what we're actually featuring today is a 27 inch gaming monitor from BenQ. And yes, before we get too deep into this video, for all of you that might be here looking for a 4K solution for gaming, this monitor actually happens to be a 1920 by 1080 display, HDR IPS. Now, if you are questioning whether a 1080p display is a good display for gaming, well, I think between 24 and 27 inches is a great little setup, especially for the price. Now, I also actually want to make it known that I will be featuring, I will be featuring this monitor on an actual gaming rig that my son is building over the next couple of weeks. So we're just waiting for the parts to come in actually next week. So hopefully we can get it built soon, but I will share that here on the channel. Now, I also really just wanna reiterate here that I'm featuring this monitor today. It'll be a brief overview of the monitor, some of the specs and what I think about it, but really focused on the M1 Mac and whether it's actually compatible. And the short of it is, it is compatible. So take that for how, however you want it, but based on my opinion and my testing and my use case, it does work. Now, as far as the M1 being able to handle games, there are still some of those limitations. Well, actually a lot of those limitations because the majority of the games are still being run through Rosetta. So not really having that natively optimized. So any of the examples that I share with you, except for Asphalt 8, which is optimized for, for M1. However, I always go to Shadow of the Tomb Raider and it is a very graphics intensive, non-optimized game. But I was able at normal graphic settings within the game itself, I was able to get 50 to 60 frames per second on that 1080p display. But again, for those that are gaming on PCs, I will be testing it again on that gaming rig where that 144 Hertz refresh rate will definitely be appreciated. And yes, I will definitely link up all of the cables that I have used and tested, but in the box from BenQ, what we do have are two HDMI 2.0 ports and one DisplayPort 1.2. And within that box, there's just that one HDMI cable. And of course, keeping in mind that we are in the budget range here when it comes to the gaming monitor. So this is HDR10 with 350 nits of brightness with a peak brightness of 400 nits. And once we actually build that rig that it will be able to fully take advantage of that free sync and that one millisecond moving picture response time, not really having taken full advantage here on the M1, it actually does still seem quite responsive. And one of the features that I kind of wanted to highlight here, which is interesting from BenQ, but it's this HDRI, intelligent optimization that as advertised by BenQ, it allows for a more immersive and customized color detail um, for whatever you're actually consuming. And there is this sensor on the monitor that actually does detect that ambient light level to make those adjustments based on your environment. And, you know, honestly here, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. And I think it really just kind of is game dependent and maybe even user dependent because I didn't really find it like appealing to me, but I do think that, you know, we'll be able to fully test this when, you know, we get that gaming rig to, to see if it is a bit more immersive as BenQ advertises. So that's just sort of a placeholder here. I'm not sure that the HDRI is a, a good thing or not. I need to dive deeper into it. But realistically, we are actually talking about an 8-bit panel here. And although it's apparently been tested at 10-bit, based on whether you're using DisplayPort, which I do recommend, but at a native resolution, and it even can go up to 12-bit via HDMI, but that actually drops down to 120 hertz. However, this actually does require that tweak in the graphics driver and really kind of calling up that GPU dithering, which is really outside the scope of an M1 anyway. But again, when we're able to dig into that PC and to the graphics and the drivers, we will be able to push that. But what I can say is that for the gaming and maybe even the movies, the colors definitely pop. I mean, I'll give credit where credit is due and it really is a decent 1080p image. And again, for the price, I'd really have no problem purchasing this again. And of course, digging deeper into the on-screen display settings via the joystick on the back, 
this can actually allow you to make adjustments with those presets and get that color that you're really after because it actually does tend to uh, lean toward the cooler side based on what I saw, but this can certainly be adjusted and tweaked. However, sort of in my case, if you're someone like myself needing more color accuracy for that work such as photo and video editing, then I'd really steer you in the direction of a couple of other offerings linked down below. It's just that I, I do believe that there are some great all around monitors out there, but when it comes to specific to gaming or photo or video editing or creative work, I mean, really this is just my opinion, but I think that if you are in that lane, like solely in that lane, you may want a monitor specific to that. But Speaking of the monitor specifics, the monitor height is actually adjustable and it does tilt up and down. And of course, it, it does actually tilt each way, but there is no vertical setup when it comes to the particular stand. Although the stand actually has this um, pretty interesting orange feature uh, along the base. And I think that, you know, for some, it may not bother you, while others, um, you may be looking for a bit more aesthetically pleasing and functional setup. So there is the vase mount option that's actually on the back, so you can customize your monitor arm if you want to on your desk setup. And I should probably also note here that there are two two and a half watt speakers built into the, the monitor itself with three custom sound modes. And based on my testing, you can definitely control the volume via the keyboard shortcuts on the M1 and the sound, Okay, so diving into the specifics of the M1, I did test the M1 Mac Mini and the M1 MacBook Air. So in my testing with the Mini, I connected directly via the HDMI to get that 144 Hertz refresh rate at the native resolution. And I also got the same results when connecting via the USB-C to display port cable. I'll link those below. And of course, as far as the MacBook Air, I was actually able to get the same exact results, no issues, USB-C to DisplayPort, but when I use the HDMI through the powered, that bus powered hub that I've recommended before, I was only getting 120 Hertz. Now, of course, this is likely just the limitation of the hub. However, I don't right now at the moment have a USB-C to HDMI cable, but I am, I'm getting one so that I can be able to test that. So I will just update you in my stories just to let you know if it actually cranks up to 144 hertz. Now, of course, rounding out here, my, my ending summary, and of course my disclaimer here is that for the money and for the features, you can ask yourself, can you find something similar that may have one or two better features, although maybe potentially lacking in another? <laughs> well, of course. However, I've actually worked with BenQ, several BenQ monitors over the years, and I've actually been very pleased with the results. And I know that there are those edge cases here that you know an issue may crop up, especially early on, right from the get, but I'm actually just working from my own experience here. So that's how I can comfortably recommend this monitor. Every monitor, every monitor, will have its own little quirks and you may actually find some issues with getting that advertised refresh rate on your particular monitor. I've always recommended, especially when it comes to the Mac users, but really just across the board to do your own research when it comes to your particular setup, because whether you know it or not, Mac OS has its own interesting way of functioning um, with certain monitors. And with the vast sea of choices out there, your, your mileage, your experience may vary. And of course, most monitors will at least come with a very basic level of screen display options, while others may offer you a more comprehensive and advanced level of customization when it comes to your RGB settings, or even some slight position adjustments that you can make, which again, I was able to do some of that on this particular monitor. So just keep that in mind, not so much like for, for Windows and if you have a, a GPU that, that has the drivers and you can customize that, but when it comes to Mac, really trying to rely on those built-in display settings and the preferences 
it can make it somewhat limiting if you really want to customize that. So keep that in mind in your research, in the reviews, looking for Mac compatibility and even being able to customize that. So as I always say, I want to leave you with hit me up on Twitter if you have anything going on that you want to just kind of converse about, especially hit me up here in the comment section because I am around YouTube quite often. These are the two best places to find me. So you go out there and do those things that matter. Go be a good human and keep rocking those faces. I'm going to keep creating that value for you here. I really appreciate your time and attention on this one. And until next time, I'll catch you right back here on the next one.